I think the biggest one for us was the moment when we were in a parking lot in the middle of Minnesota and we had just scraped together the last of our money in a hotel for a hotel room. One of our members had just up and left, just quit, quit the band. Um, we didn't have a label yet and we were just basically at the end of our rope and we were, the four of us, me, Nathan, Dion and Joey were sitting in a parking lot and it was kind of one of those moments where either we're gonna give up and this is it, we're just gonna go home, we're gonna go back to our lives or we're gonna work as hard as we can for one year. And we gave ourselves one year and said, this is it, we've gotta do it. We've got to you know, put everything we possibly can into this band and, and, and see what's gonna happen. And within just a few months of that, we were signed to our first label and we were heading out in, uh, in a tour van and going across country and starting to begin the process of touring. But I think that's the moment when we when we realize like if we're not consumed with like i said getting just working as hard as we can at every moment and in and, and seizing every opportunity and as dave edgars would put it just saying yes to everything that comes along i think uh well we would all have day jobs being back in w winter haven florida where we're from and uh and, and uh, but i think that that passion uh, um, began there. I think the, you know, the desire to work as hard as we possibly can, and uh, take take any and take the opportunities and take no opportunities for granted. Um, that's where it began in that parking lot. Yeah, I think I think it's only human nature for anybody to want approval for anything they're doing. You know, as as children, um, you know, we we just stare at our parents, hoping that any second, you know, they would turn their attention towards us. And you know, we always want us, you know, that sense of pride. I think when you um, when you you know you get older, you know, you kind of tr you know translate that either into your spouse and then then from there you, you sometimes translate into your work and your job and I think there's a constantly I think we're all searching for that you know for that someone to give us that sense of approval but I think that living your life by that you know because there, there's nothing wrong with that there's nothing wrong with the approval I mean there I mean you you know at some point you need that you need that from your boss to know that you're doing an okay job you're going in the right direction but I think that when you become to when you put that as the basis of who you are, constantly searching for approval. What do I wear today? I don't know. What are they going to like? You know, what what should I do with my life? Well, what is everybody else going to like me to do? You know, it's that if you build the foundation on everybody else, you know, you'll find yourself to be a, a quite hollow and uh, uh, just an empty shell of who you should be. Because at the end of the day, you're the person who has to lay out your head on the pillow and, and look back at your life and go, you know did I do a good job? Was this album good? Are these songs good? I mean, if they don't mean anything to you and you're just trying for everything, everyone else, um, the songs are going to reflect that. They'll be hollow and a shell of what they were supposed to be. That was actually before major label. That was still when we were with this. Uh, we were with this smaller label out of Seattle, Washington. But you know, for me, it was the moment. It was the moment of 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 pure weakness. When you start reading the press and then you start believing it. You know, you start. You know, somebody reviews your record or somebody on social media says you're the best at this or you do this so well. I mean, there's a moment where you can just hold that in and put your shoulders back and then start treating people like this is how I am. You know, this is what people say of me. And I think it's the same way as when we were talking about earlier about how, uh, you know, like we, 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 we take all these things, you know, like this, we want to be admonished and we, we, we're trying to like, you know, please so many other people. We build this little statue of ourselves, you know, we, you know, tell me I'm good. Tell me I'm right. Tell me I'm, I'm, you know, worthwhile. And we build this statue but there's nothing in it, it's, it's hollow. These accomplishments and these, and these people telling me how good I am, I appreciate it, I, I thank my fans, that's amazing. 
but in 10 years, it's going to be someone else. It's not me. So if I feel like I've built this statue up and then, then, and I look for their approval and it's gone, then I'm going to, I'm going to again, be like this hollow, a hollow statue, a mess of, of trying to, you know, look to others to, to find self-worth. And that's just not what I want. I want to, I want to be, um, I want to be a complete human based solely on being a complete human and not because other people tell, told me I'm good or that, you know, oh, you did this or, oh, you did this charity or you did this. Oh, you're so good. That's not, that doesn't, you know, that's, uh, that's, I appreciate the admonishment and hopefully I can influence people to hopefully become a better human or to, to go and do charity or, or go be in a band or I love the inspiration of, you know, aspect of it, but there is, there was a point in my life where I felt like, wait, I could take these words and they could become me and they could become mine. And, you know, and, uh, and then from there you start treating people like that. And I just did not want to get to that point where you just become inhuman and intolerable and, you know, eventually just looked on as a giant asshole. <laughs> and so that's what you, that's all, that's the end of the day. That's what it is. And so bringing Seth out was, was another one of the best decisions I could have made just because I don't want to be prideful. I don't want to be arrogant. I don't want to look out at the fans and see anybody and I go, oh, I'm better than them. I'm better than everyone out here. You know, it's just, you know, it's just not who I want to be. Oh, um, I feel like I felt the most alive at the birth of my daughter. I think that was the moment when I was everything in this universe. Um, just became alive, the euphoria, the just, it was the most amazing experience. And I feel like for me, um, yeah, euphoria is the word I would describe to use it. I mean, it was the the universe could have ended and, and I would have, just just been so mesmerized I would not even have taken notice it was incredible it's um, it's a detachment it's you know mentally I have to detach myself from the situation um, I can see why so many musicians would <laughs> do drugs <laughs> because mentally you don't want to tell yourself the truth that you are away I mean, it's like, it's, I'm, I'm holding my breath, I ho you know, and I, the only time that I get to exhale is when I'm around them. And, uh, and that's just what it's like. And that's honest, you know, it's just, that's as real as it gets. And, um, it hurts. It's, it's the worst. I, um, it's the hardest part of touring. I am so passionate about music and, and I love touring, but it does not even, come close to the to the passion I feel for them. So if there was a way that I could amalgamate the two and um, you know bring them with me, I think I would could tour forever. But at this time it's just it's just one of those things where, you know, I'm just holding my breath. Every day. Every day. I think, if we're just being honest, <laughs> I think that, that, and this is like the most honest and real, but that, uh, geez, I think that Jesus Christ loves them. And I know that sounds like a bit religious or coming from a point of faith, but I don't think I've ever been asked that question. And I think if I had one, if I could tell one person, but see, I don't want to convince them because I just want them to experience it. And if they experience it the same way I do, then that would be incredible. But I think I want to say, because I don't want to, I don't want to like have convinced them um, that there's hope. I think that there's hope for, for any one of us. And what that means to different people, they'll have to figure out in their own lives. But I just feel like so many people are, um, so many people 
live under their circumstances, like they're weighted by it, as if yesterday and everything that they've done in the past is all they're going to be. You know, and I want people to realize that there is hope. You can change your life. You can change your world. You can quit whatever you're doing. You can move forward in whatever you want to do. And, and yes, there's going to be hardships and struggles. And yes, you know, there may not be money right now for, for, for university. Or there may, you know, it may be so hard to, to stop, you know, whatever it is in your life that's holding you back. But just realize that you are not the summation of all your yesterdays. That there is a better tomorrow and there's hope out there. Oh man, yeah, life is unbelievable. Sometimes I wake up and I feel like I'm in a movie and they're all taping my life. It's just, I don't know. It's just, it's a, it's amazing. I, I do not take this for granted. I mean, right around that time we were, we were getting ready to, uh, to go to Africa and the Middle East to play for the troops. We got to play for troops from the UK and Germany and the United States. And it was just, it was awesome to be able to, to experience that and to, give back and whether I whether we as a society agree with the war or not is is left for a, a coffee shop conversation but I feel like I will always support the troops you know I will always because you know this is this is their lives on the line these are people that they believe in a cause or they believed in it you know and 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 the government has sent them on the front lines and uh, I, I you know I just, I, it's the least I can do is to go give them some, some, uh, some amount of time or any amount of time to, to kind of take their mind away from the fact that, hey, tomorrow I may not see daylight. I mean, that's just, to me, is just like, wow, you are, you know, putting yourself on the line. And many, many um, service people have, have, you know, given their lives and, uh, and for, for the sake of, of fighting, you know, whether it be terrorism or, Taliban or, uh, you know, just, uh, you know, uh, people who want to take away freedoms. And so to me, for me, I thought that was just, it, just uh, the least I could do is, is go over there and, 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 and help entertain and support them. But uh, yeah, that was, it's, it's just incredible. No, I, so many golden moments of life. That was just the most recent one that's kind of brought a little bit of fulfillment, you know, a little bit of joy to me, the fact that I can go out there and, and we can help them. Yeah, I met this guy named Bob and we were, you know, we, 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 uh, we hit it off and he works for special forces. And I just, for whatever reason, like my heart just melted for him. I was just so, you know, like, because this was his fourth tour and the way that he described him passionately about how that he feels like we are, you know, like we are changing the world for the better. And he would tell me stories about a village who, you know, when they came to the village, the villagers were shooting at them and, the, you know, the town was just a wreck. But through education and through understanding and realizing like, you know, at first he hated these these people, this people, because well, obviously if somebody's trying to kill you all the time, but then he slowly started to realize that the Taliban would come in and say, we will kill your family if you do not shoot at the Americans. And so he had to learn that and he had to sit down with them and he had to tell them, we're not here, to, we won't hurt you. We're not here for you. We're, at, you know, we're here for the Taliban. We're gonna get rid of this pressure in your life. So you, you know, you're free. Um, and uh, he was telling me about how in Timbuktu right now, how that the, this, this faction of Al-Qaeda is coming through and, 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 and kind of working their way south and how that the, these people are saying no more art, no more music, no more dancing, no more drinking or smoking, or they're taking away all these you know, personal freedoms. And it was kind of like, I just felt like to, to watch his passion and then to realize like the dangerous job he does, it was just kind of like, I'll just never forget him. You know, I'll it'll constantly be in my thoughts and prayers. I mean, it's just the fact that he's out there trying to defend this, something as, 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 you know, mundane for you and I as dancing, you know, or, or, you know, Hey, do you want to go to the pub? Well, they are not this whole 
half this country can't do that right now. They don't have these liberties. And the fact that somebody out there believes so much in freedom and personal freedoms that he's out there risking his life is just, is just incredible to me. And it really, yeah, it really affected me. I don't know. I don't know because I feel like I've done it all. Like I feel like I've that once that one life, you know, that 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 this life that that I've been given, I feel like I've lived it. And that's a great question. If you would have asked me 5 or 10 years ago, I would have had a list of things and this is what I want to do, but I've I've done them, you know? And I I think from here on out, my job is simply to inspire and impassion and to um, give to the next generation, to find bands and, and pour into their lives and to, you know, because I've, I, you know, I feel like I've created the best albums, I, you know, that I personally can create. You know, I feel like I've, I've got to see from, you know, from here to, to China, you know, I literally, you know, Thailand and Philippines and Germany and Russia and like, I just, I, I, I just, I couldn't believe, I would never have believed this 10 years ago and to, to have such a, a loving family and to have such great friends and to have done all these amazing experiences with great friends. I mean, I just don't know. I don't know what this life has for me. I'm not sure how it can get better, but um, but I think that, like I said, now it's my turn to make those around me as happy as I possibly can. <laughs>